Hi, in this video we're going to do an example on equivalent rates. Uh, let's look at the example. Uh, it's a little bit different. We're, going to, uh, we're asked to determine the derivative of D with respect to I, where D is the periodic effective discount rate that is equivalent to the periodic effective interest rate I. So before I get started, let me make a comment here. It says that D is the periodic effective discount rate. I is the periodic effective interest rate. So the word the there, and, and they don't give me a time frame. That's kind of the key point here is they don't give me a time frame. They don't say this is a uh, you know, uh, monthly effective uh, discount rate for the fourth month or something like that. Well, when you're con the, so by not giving me that information, um, um, uh, it's implied that these rates are, are based off of compounding. So um, when you're compounding, you don't have to be told a time period because uh, the periodic effective uh, rates are the same regardless of which period you're talking about. So if you have, say, a monthly uh, effective discount rate for the first month is the same as the monthly effective discount rate for the second month and so forth. And so that's when they call it the periodic effective discount rate. So there's no time period. Uh, it's implied in here that I'm compounding. Okay, so now uh, the solution. Well, I, I'm asked to find the derivative of D with respect to I. So that means I need to be thinking of D as a function of I. So uh, how do I do that? Well, because they're equivalent rates, what I'll do is I'll look at the periodic discount factor V. On the one hand, V is equal to a 1 minus D. If I was given D, V would be a 1 minus D. But if I was given I, V would be equal to a 1 over a 1 plus I. So this relationship here is going to allow me to, uh, to, to, get a, uh, to write D in terms of I or I in terms of D. For instance, uh, look at the, uh, the equation here. Let's don't, not look at the part 1 minus D equals a 1 over 1 plus I. Let's solve that for D by, let's see, I'd add D to both sides, subtract a 1 over 1 plus I from both sides, and I get a D equals a 1 minus a 1 over a 1 plus I. And now I want to take the derivative of, 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 uh, uh, of that D with respect to I. So I could stop right here and take a derivative. I think actually if I'm taking a derivative, it might be easier to write that second term as a 1 plus I to the minus 1. Then I could just use a power rule here. And I see then that when I take the derivative of D with respect to I, Derivative of 1, of course, is 0. And then when I take a derivative of the second term, I get a, uh, the minus 1 comes down, I get plus a 1 plus i to the minus 2 by the power rule. One other comment here is that uh, the 1 plus i to the minus 2, if you write that with positive exponents, you would, you, it would be equal to a 1 over a 1 plus i squared, which is a 1 over 1 plus i squared, or v squared. And so sometimes, you know, you might see as one of your answer choices, the derivative of D with respect to I is V squared. Well, that's, that's actually the correct uh, answer choice here. Okay, so now let's go back to the, uh, the first couple of lines here where I had 1 minus D on the one, that, that's, that's the periodic discount factor using a D, and 1 over 1 plus I is a periodic discount factor using an I. So those two are equal to each other if they're equivalent rates. And then uh, we said, well, Solving for D, then I would get D equals a one minus a one over one plus I. So now let's. Uh, so uh, let, let me tell you where I'm going with this for just a second. I'm already done with the problem. We already solved. Uh, you know, we determined what that derivative is. But I want to show you a, a, another relationship between this D and the I uh, that will be, uh, I hope, helpful to you. So at this point, we have a D equal a 1 minus a 1 over 1 plus i. And what I'd like to do now is, uh, well, let's combine that. That's a two-term expression there. That's uh, d equals this two-term expression. Let's add them together into a one-term expression by getting a common denominator of 1 plus i. So the first term I would have in the numerator of 1 plus i, and then I'm subtracting 1, so the 1s would add out. And so uh, when I add those two terms together, I just get an i over a 1 plus i. I want to rewrite that i over a 1 plus i as an i times a 1 over a 1 plus i because, uh, again, the 1 over 1 plus i is the uh, periodic discount factor v. So I get a d equals an i times v, and I'm just going to take out the stuff in the middle and rewrite it this way. The reason I want to write it this way is because, uh, you know, what have we been saying all along? We, we've been saying that the interest is paid at the end of the period, discount is paid at the beginning of the period. And so this is, see how consistent this is with what we've been saying. If, you're, if, you've got some, if you've got a value at the end of the period and you want to discount it back to the beginning of the period, you multiply it by V. And so I is at the end of the period. When I multiply I times V, I get that 
discount the i then discounts back to to d so d equals the i times v should make uh, should make some sense uh, should should you know be be clear to you let me let me get to the same result another way let's start again with uh, the two uh, periodic discount factors in the in the in the two situations being equal to each other. On the one hand, periodic discount factor is one minus d. On the other hand, the periodic discount factor is one over one plus i. So now, what I had done before is solve for d. Now let me solve for i. So when I solve for i, I'll get um, uh, well. There are several different ways of doing this, but what I would do is take the reciprocal of both sides. And when I take the when I take the reciprocal of both sides, I'm going to put the I'm going to switch the the uh, switch the expressions around. So 1 plus i uh, it would be equal to uh, 1 over 1 minus d, and I'll subtract 1 from both sides. Once again, I get this uh, common, uh, I want to combine those two terms with a common denominator of a 1 minus d. And so in the numerator of the second term, I'd have a 1 minus d. So the result would be a 1 in the numerator. I'd have a 1 minus parentheses 1 minus d, which is just a d in the numerator. And then the denominator, of course, is, is the 1 minus uh, d. This time, the 1 minus d in that denominator of that last expression, remember, that's the periodic discount factor v. And so I end up with a i equal a d over v. And when I clear out the fractions, I'm back to the same result that if you take i, the interest rate, Multiply it times v. That would correspond to kind of that would correspond to discounting it back a period. Then you get the d, the discount rate. So the two expressions then that uh, are the two type, the two uh, sets of well uh, equations that I have would be uh, the 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 v value here on the the top left of the of the slide here. V equals a one minus d or a one over one plus i, where d and i are the equivalent uh, equivalent rates. And then on the other hand, d would be i times v. And so if I ever wanted to find if I ever wanted to find an expression, uh, you know, write d as an as an expression involving i's, then I start with the d equals an i times v, the top right. Uh, equation and for v I plug in a 1 over a 1 plus i and I end up with what exactly what I you know what I had a little while ago that d equals an i over a 1 plus i let me make a comment here that uh, the the original problem was to find the derivative of d with respect to i so I could actually use this expression that I have right now d equals an i over a 1 plus i uh, take the derivative of an i over a 1 plus i and you should get back to a v squared again uh, now, of course, when I take this derivative of an i over 1 plus i uh, with respect to i, I've got to use a, a quotient rule in that case. So I think it's a little bit harder than what we did before, but it would still work. Now, on the other hand, if I had, uh, if I had i and I want to know what i was equal to as a function of d, then I go back to, again, the top right equation where d is equal to an i times v. This time, for v, I would substitute, substitute in a 1 minus d and then divide both sides of that equation by a 1 minus d, and I'd have i equals a d over a 1 minus d. So it's very easy to get these, these, these relationships between i and d just by knowing those top, uh, those top equations up there. These two equations, then, I could work with them and easily uh, derive expressions or, or, or formulas d as a function of i or i as a function of d. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.